Happy first day of free agency, everybody. On today's show, we're going to discuss who are the all RFAs, who are qualified, who is not, and who are the surprise buyouts and RFAs who weren't qualified offers from other teams that the Florida Panthers could be going after. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And hey, welcome into the Saturday, July 1st edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. I'm Armando Velez, and you can follow me on Twitter at Monoman12. Follow the show account on Twitter and Instagram at LO underscore FLA Panthers. And thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. And today's episode is brought to you by ebay motors a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit same with your vehicle so for parts that fit head to ebay motors and look for the green check mark stay in the game with ebay guaranteed fit ebaymotors.com let's ride ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers eligible items only exclusions apply so first day of free agency is finally here the buyout period is officially closed as at, at this at, at as we are six hours past the buyout period as I'm recording this at 6.09 a.m. on uh, July 1st. So wanted to help you guys wake up to the in as far as a celebration of what's to come for uh, the free, free agency and the Florida Panthers and the entire NHL. And we had a lot of uh, news as far as, as far as the world of the Florida Panthers and the NHL, which is even though I teased in the at, at the end of our Fairbanks Friday episode with Nick Fairbanks that we were going to get back to you guys over the weekend, but it felt like I was going to leave you guys hanging a little bit uh, because there was going to be so much going on in between then and now. But we had a, quite a few developments even even then uh in just 24 hours from o- over 24 hours from one podcast release to the other but so of course every free agency period has the that that time where you make have to make a decision on who to qual- give qualifying offers to and who not to and there are some obvious ones that we we knew that they weren't going to get uh qualifying offers like a uh, Colin White and Giovanni Smith. Uh, Giovanni Smith was more of a reclamation project when the Panthers did that three tra- three three team trade with Detroit and Anaheim. As far as far as Michael Delzato being part of that trade, Colin White was a guy who was bought out for from the Ottawa Senators. The the Panthers were also trying to get some value out of that as they were had still had a lot of money in dead cap six point five last year. Uh, so they had to squeeze in these little one-year deals, these prove-it guys, but didn't really work out. I mean, Colin White was scratched for the, a good part of the beginning of the season last year, and Devonny Smith, uh, uh, prone to making a, a, a mistake here and there that has the pa- Panthers in the, in the penalty box and out of position quite a few times. That was uh, quite a few, quite a bit frustrating uh, here and there, and. We we saw it with when he was a scratch in the, in the playoffs. I, I mean, I mean, can't be surprised when uh, when uh, these guys don't get a, a qualifying offer. Max Gildon is one as well, who's battled his uh, fair share of injuries as well, uh, and been with the system since 2017. It, it's it was time uh, when when you're that long into a system, um, and you can only have so many contracts on your books, not just for the salary cap, but roster size as well. So it was a uh, it was when someone's taking that long to get up to the show uh it, you can't be surprised when someone that th- doesn't get a qualifying offer there sir noel uh returned mid-season uh this year started with the florida everblades made his way back to the charlotte checkers uh and didn't get a qualifying offer there evan fitzpatrick is the other one goalie uh for uh, as well he didn't get one uh neither but the ones that did uh 
Gordon and Sango can't be surprised about that. Lots of upside there. Uh, and even though his role wasn't the biggest in Charlotte, there, there's, there's still that guy who can create something uh, as far as, uh, as a, being a playmaker, someone who's uh, who has the size, the, the physicality as well. Uh, and, you know, there, there's also pride in relation to that too. You don't want to give them up for nothing because someone is going to get that opportunity and, and run with it. And uh, that's something you don't want to risk if you're Bill Zito. Alexi Hepiniemi had a career year in Charlotte. So, of course, he was going to get a, an offer as well. Uh, and John Ludwig is one that was healthy this year, played 50-plus games uh, in, in, in Charlotte this year as well for – uh the florida panthers so and the last one for the panthers to get a qualifying offer is logan hutsko and originally he signed a contract uh to play in the shl had battled a few bit of injuries even before he was even drafted which had him slip into the third round in 2018 89th overall he was uh qualified an offer and when i heard that he was uh signing a contract in the shl i thought that there was no uh, qualifying offer coming his way, but maybe he's changed his mind and he's going to come uh, back to the Charlotte Checkers this year. Who knows? Uh, but uh, 24 years old as well for Logan Hutsko, Boston College uh, as well. So maybe maybe he's uh, in for a career year uh, as as far as as far as health and as far as an opportunity to make it up to the show event eventually. But there's a few players in the in the league who weren't uh, qualified, given qualifying offers that maybe could have some interest around the NHL and maybe the Florida Panthers. One of them is uh, left winger Max Comtois, who is seen as a guy who uh, might be the solution as far as the Anaheim Ducks rebuild. And maybe that's a guy that the Florida Panthers will uh, take a chance on as far as a guy who, was, who could... Uh, be part of a of, of a team that's contending not maybe maybe not play every single night but as far as his growth uh as far as far as that a, a guy who can grow within that daniel sprong is another one as well uh for, who uh played for the seattle kraken 20 goal scorer uh, in 66 games for the for seattle battle a few uh injuries here and there but went a little cold during the postseason as well uh, so maybe that's a little bit of a concern uh, if you're Bill Zito, but 21 goals in 66 games. That's he hell impressive as well. Ethan Ethan Bear, uh, right, right shot defenseman, which the Florida Panthers will need help on the right side with Montour and Ekblad expected to miss parts of the season. So the Panthers would need help on the right side. So that is a, a, a name that could be out there for the Florida Panthers as far as guys who didn't get uh, qualifying offers as well. So... It, it's going to be interesting to see how they can take advantage of guys uh, on shorter ter shorter term deals or shorter uh, cap hits as the Florida Panthers. They are not in the worst cap situation, but they're not in the best. They're a little bit in the bottom half of it, of it uh, where they're about maybe like the 19th or 20th most cap space, but they're not towards like, the bottom five as far as far as where they stand as as far as needing to make a move and and with and room to play with as well so not the worst situation for the florida panthers but there was also some buyouts some that came as a surprise some that that the florida panthers could be going after or could use some veteran experience in their lineup and we are going to discuss who those names are and more next here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. But first, we're going to tell you all about Athletic Greens. And our next partner, AG1, a daily foundational supplement that I started drinking every day. And I started taking AG1 because, as you know, in South Florida, coffee is very rich in that area where I come from. So sometimes I drink a little bit more than I should. And that's why I started taking AG1 because I need a little break from the from the coffee. When I do, it makes me feel uh, unstoppable before my workout, especially if I drink it in the morning, and it makes me feel great after 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 that. 
And all great athletes have one thing in common. They take care of their bodies. And a huge part of that starts with optimizing whole body health. It's a micro habit that delivers micro benefits and helps just about everybody to take care of their health every day. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 trial packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash NHL Network. That's drinkag1.com slash NHL Network. Check it out. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. Every day as we are going to be back either Sunday night or Monday morning to discuss the moves that the Florida Panthers make or the lack of moves that the Florida Panthers make uh, in free agency. And it's crazy to think about more of when we talk about the last few episodes about how the free agency class this year isn't really strong i'm just looking more into what the the big board uh, of uh that bleacher report has out and there's a few big names there there's a vladimir tarasenko ryan o'reilly dimitri orloff even uh stanley cup champion alex kalorn who's great on the power play tyler Bertuzzi. but when you get back down past number six number seven is jt comfort and jt comfort is hasn't scored more than 20 goals in a, in a season. So to give you an idea about where the free agency class stands as well is, is a, is kind of a indication of, of maybe that the Panthers are going to do something via, via the trade route uh, when it comes to uh, free agency. But there was a surprise buyout uh, yesterday as, as uh, Matt Duchesne forward for the national predators uh, was a guy who was bought out with four years left on his in his on his uh, deal, uh, so that's going to be stretched out for Nashville for for the next eight years, uh, with uh, buyouts doubling the of the contract with majority of the cap hit going in the first four years. Well, the last three years in, in the case of Matt Duchesne, but you get some cap relief early on. So Nashville is going to eat up five to six million in. 24 25 and up, up to 2027 and that uh, until and then it goes down to 1.5 after that they're going to get some cap relief but barry trotts uh new general manager of the nashville predators is really uh honed in on, on the rebuild and really committed to trying to make something happen and he moved a little bit of draft capital from uh this year and looking at putting it into next year as well with the fair share of trades that he made as well so go listen to lock on predators if you want to listen more of that but uh matt duchene is a it, it is a guy who's consistently 25 goals or, or more a guy who can fit in your middle six or even put into your top line uh, who could take faceoffs as well if needed plays multiple places on on in in, in on your forward lines as well and this guy is just watching his highlights, especially from his 40 goal season in 2022, guy gets out in transition, has a wicked wrist shot as well. Especially, especially when, when it comes to odd man rushes and you're and he's and you think that he's going to make that pass and he and lo and behold, he's uh, he's sending it far side to full goaltenders and man, with him being bought out, this is this is a guy who you think that. He might not be looking for the highest uh, payday and just wants to go to a contender. And hey, this is the luxury of the Florida Panthers just coming off a Stanley Cup final run who could be, who could get, just get that one last piece into the lineup. And I know the focus is on defense. Yes, I know. But it, as far as looking into your forward groups as well, you could definitely um, look into Matt Duchesne. He's going to draw interest from a lot of teams. Toronto is going to be one of them as well. He, could he go back to Colorado as well, where he was originally, uh, who, 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 where he made a name for himself as well? You, you could definitely maybe see that, depending on where the Avalanche's uh, cap space is. So uh, that's a that's a guy who you you might want to to circle as far as maybe a guy who the Florida Panthers could bring in. Uh, and one thing that you could, one thing that it could be beneficial is this is something actually that Jacob Winans uh, brought up on Twitter uh, yesterday is that if you're able to sign a Matt Duchesne, 
then maybe you could offer up something bigger if you are to trade for defenseman Noah Hannafin to Calgary Flames because you have that assurance uh, there in your lineup. Because if you're te- if you're asking me, Matt Duchesne or Anthony Duclair, I I, I know who I'm picking. Uh, and uh, you could up your offer even though the offer for Anthony Duclair is is reportedly something that Calgary doesn't like. So maybe say maybe you can be more sure of what you have at the forward at, in your forward groups that you can maybe put something bigger to the table. And I don't know. And I don't know what that package looks like. Um, th- they haven't revealed what what it is. Uh, and for next year's capital, the Panthers don't have a pick until round three. Uh, la- next year's uh, first round pick is belongs to the Flyers as far as the Claude Drew trade and uh, the 2024 second round pick is part of the anton strawman trade to arizona to as far as cap relief that was something way uh, kicking the can down the road and that that one's gonna hurt a little bit as far as draft capital uh thanks dale talon but uh but something that you had to get off your books uh from from after the 2021 season but there is one player who is uh who is who has interest in the Florida Panthers and the Panthers do have interest in in this person as well and it, and that is left 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 shot defenseman Shane Gossespierre and we we've spoken about the, Shane Gossespierre Gossespierre being a South Florida native and it would be cool to bring the local guy home and you, um it would be great to have him as uh, as part of your second pair or even bottom pair uh defenseman uh there for for the florida panthers and great puck mover great in transition as well off, more offensively minded more than anything uh but of course the 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 opportunity for someone to play for their hometown team is uh some something that that it, it's really hard to pass up if you're ghost but it, it's going to be really difficult for the panthers because of of the unknown status of Aaron Eckblad, unknown status of Brandon Montour, how long are they going to miss in, in the 2023-24 season? Because, listen, uh, they have all this cap space, $10 million, but the LTIR space that they're going to create, which is if you're putting Montour and Eckblad combined, that is 10.5 more. And you are likely not going to spend all of that money because that would assume that they are out for the entirety of the regular season. So you got to leave that space open there for those two to eventually return. You could take a little more risk uh, as far as a cap perspective with Brandon Montour, depending on how the torn labrum progresses. But you got to give yourself an opportunity to bring him back if he is uh, healthy. And of course, and I'm not going to recommend cap circumvention, especially because these are human beings. These are, these are players who want to play as, as well, but also that this could be an opportunity too for, for Bill Zito. If, if he sees that this is a recovery process, that's going to take a lot longer than originally planned, but it is said the beginning of the season that they're going to miss. Uh, of course, GMs, front offices, they're not going to tell us the whole truth about what their statuses are. So, But knowing that they already have the 10.2 um, in cap space right now, but likely adding another 10.5 in LTIR space, it, 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 there's going to be a lot of signs just in the next few days of, of guys who are of, – of, who is of who's going to be signed and maybe put connect the dots and read between the um, read the tea leaves as, as well uh, as far as who's going to be, who's going to be sidelined for a long period of time and who's going to be, and who's going to return earlier than expected. And the, the, the fact that it's two right-handed shots as well, that's really hard. That's really hard to swallow if you're the Panthers, because as far as the system, as far as the in-house guys for the Panthers, the only two right-handed shot guys as, at this moment in time at 6:27 a.m. on a on on a on a Saturday morning, uh, the only uh, 
the only guys are Santu Kinunen and Mike Benning. Santu Kinunen has spent a little bit of time in in uh, in Charlotte. And are you are, are you gonna are you gonna just throw him into the wolves right away uh, to to start the season? Uh, and that and that's something that for the for Bill Zito to 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 consider as well. Uh, of course, with the, him being on his ELC. Uh, you, you can you can send him up and down without any waivers when Ekblad and Montour are are back as well. Same, um, and and Mike Benning, um, he burned his uh, first year of his ZLC last year. Uh, was a black ace for for the for the team during the postseason, uh, but hasn't played a even a an AHL game. I know he's a I know he's a person who uh, who is great on the on the offensive end as well. Power play a power play specialist has a wicked um, shot as well. Great puck mover. But are are you are you going to throw him into the wolves uh, there as as well? That's uh, that's something that you know you got you got to consider if you're the Panthers as far as the in house candidates as well as far as guys who are in the system who are right handed shots and likely chances are the guys who are left handed shots or maybe could be out of position to start this season. I mean, I mean Mackenzie Weger. Um, when he was with the Florida Panthers, he was consistently playing on his offside uh, when he was paired up with Ekblad. So not something that the Florida Panthers have been through before. Um, and it's not uncommon either. It's just, you get, you gotta, you gotta feed, you gotta work with what you got as, as far as, as far as uh, getting through this uh, difficult stretch that is going to be injuries and, and the start of the season. But the Florida Panthers went through, through a t- tough transition last year and the fact that they have the this coaching staff one year one year in uh i think it's going to be a little bit of an easier transition in the beginning of the season uh this year versus uh last year that's that's for sure but we are going to discuss more about the salary cap the state of the nhl and what to expect from players as far as what kind of deals they'll be signing once free agency opens at noon Eastern on July 1st. We're going to discuss that more here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Third and final segment here on this Saturday, July 1st edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. And once again, happy first day of free agency to all of you who celebrate and happy Canada Day to everybody north of the border as well. And a little bit of perspective that I got today from Greg Wyshynski of ESPN about what what players could be looking for as far as deals and as far as the state of the NHL and the salary cap. And this is uh, this is the tweet from Greg Wyshynski. Uh, it says, quote, one player agent tells me that the flat cap for 23, 24 plus the jump in space in 24, 25 up to at least 88 million equals a lot of one year deals in UFA market starting tomorrow said the nhl agent in on one year deals i think we'll see more than um, people imagine you're going to have players saying bleep i i can't get that three or four year year deal that i want so i got to sign a one-year deal and go back up to bat next year when there is four million more to spend close quote and you know the florida panthers are familiar with this as well with the situation that they were in last year and chances are they could be very well in that situation next year and let's discuss that 88 million that could be coming up next year uh as of this moment in time when you're looking at cat friendly as as far as their projections uh right now their projection says 87.5 for next year uh the um this tweet from greg wasinski has 88 so 
let's add a let's do a little math ourselves with what the Panthers could look like this time next year at 35.8 million in in cat space and of course there's a little bit to spend here and there with extend possible possible extensions of Anton Lindell, Gus Forsling, Brandon Montour, Etulus Terranen. Those are guys who are who are who could be signing extensions as soon as today uh, when they become eligible. But you you also got to consider the the amount of expiring contracts on the Florida Panthers as well who guys who could be playing their last uh, year in a Florida Panthers uh, sweater you you think maybe a Sam Reinhart, an Anthony Duclair if he's uh, not traded, Nick Cousins who great value from Nick Cousins signing that two year deal uh, la- last uh, season. Ryan Lomberg is one uh, as well who's going to be a UFA next year. Uh, so those, those those are those are things to consider when it comes to when it comes to the the state of the NHL and the state of the Florida Panthers. So as far as uh, I'm not expecting a Tyler Bertuzzi or Dmitry Orlov to sign a one year deal. They're gonna try to cash in. Those are those are guys who make a big difference in your lineups as well. And they're they're gonna there's gonna be a lot of projection for these guys to live up to their their deals, especially on the front end where even on the back end the percentage of people are looking at it as percentage of the cap that it takes up when Sergey Bobrovsky was originally signed with the Florida Panthers back in 2019 yes that 10 million dollar cap hit is big but the way management thinks probably thinks about these things is percentage of the cap and if we weren't expecting a pandemic we weren't expecting a flat cap to be in in uh, coming coming when it came to COVID-19 so Dale Talon at the time was thinking as this contract ages, the the amount of the 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 cap hit is is only taking up this much. Just doing some quick math here, uh 10 million divided by 83.5. What's the cap hit right now for for Sergey Borowski's contract? It's about 12% of the cap. Uh you know, uh of course with uh you 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 would have hoped that it would have been a little lower with uh with with there not being a, a flat cap which honestly it should be the owners who take who bite the bullet here not the players paying escrow but you know that's just my opinion but with uh with with that you the big name players are going to get their 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 bread but you could expect more of the guys who are on prove it deals as well to, to get one one year uh contracts. I mean last year, one example of a guy who signed a one year deal last year but didn't get but likely isn't getting his money's worth this year. John Klimberg, uh defenseman for the Dallas Stars signed a one year deal with the Anaheim Ducks as a one year seven million as far as like a prove it deal, hoping that he gets a long term deal this year and uh bet on himself and uh was uh is likely not gonna get the long term deal at a high c- high uh, cap hit that he was expecting later traded to the Minnesota wild mid season uh, last year to play for a contender. And uh, th- this is, this is the risk you're taking when it comes to this as well. And I, I don't, I don't wish on this for anyone uh, as far as betting on yourself and ending up not getting what you want later on. I, I want these players to get paid. I want them to, to set themselves up for, for life post hockey but this is a situation as well where where things could fall flat on these players faces too as far as as far as what is to come as far as these um these general managers and front offices could be allocating their dollars somewhere else because just like a rise in salary cap also means a rise of expectations for what players want so it's all going to catch up eventually i mean austin matthews is going to sign likely a five-year deal at at 13 million and it's not going to be an eight-year deal um at least that's what's reported and because why he wants to cash in more later with an expectation of a salary cap rise as well so this is a little bit of a little bit of perspective on uh, on what a, a rise in salary cap can do and what the players um are because players they're looking out for themselves which they should and also front offices are looking out for the team as as well and and I'm not going to 
be I'm not going to be begging a player to take less. Uh, I, I if I were negotiating a contract, I'm thinking about me. Uh, of course, part of you is thinking about the team as well. If you want to bring guys back, if, if you guys uh, 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 so, but there, there's got to be there's got to be that sense of taking care of yourself too. So interesting to see what free agency is going to bring on 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 Saturday. And it's going to be, hopefully there's a lot of activity where we are discussing how this roster is going to be turned over for the Panthers. What kind of trade will the Florida Panthers pull off? Will they pull off that Noah Hannafin trade? Will they get that big name free agent even even on a one-year deal? Or do they sign them long-term? And, and we will, on Monday, we will be discussing the impacts of if there is a, a big fish that the Florida Panthers land. What could that mean for other players who are upcoming UFAs next year as far as their chances of re-signing as well with this take with a possible long-term deal with a high cap hit taking up a future future cap space for the Panthers? We're going to discuss that on Monday and very excited to discuss uh, and project how the Florida Panthers could look and as far as their lineups, power play, penalty kill, you name it. So thank you guys as always. For, for listening. We'll be back with you guys Sunday night or Monday, one of the two, but make sure you're subscribed to the show uh, so you guys will know uh, what, when it comes out. But in the meantime, if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe to the podcast to be notified every single time the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Don't forget to also subscribe to the other shows on the Locked On NHL Network, including Locked On NHL, Locked On Fantasy Hockey with Flip Livingstone and Sue Roden, and Locked On NHL prospects. Thank you for making the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. So I'm Armando Velez signing off. And you've been listening to Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Where's your team? Every day.